Praise the Lord. We're going to read uh, Genesis chapter 5, 1 to 20. The Generations of Adam. This is the book of the generations of Adam in the day that God created man. In the likeness of God made he him. Male and female <coughs> created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam in the day when they were created. And Adam lived a hundred and thirty years and begat a son in his own likeness after his image and called his name Seth. And the days of Adam after he had begotten Seth were eight hundred years and he begat sons and daughters. And all the days that Adam lived were nine hundred and thirty years and he died. And Seth lived a hundred and five years and begat Enos, and Seth lived after he begat Enos eight hundred and seven years, and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Seth were nine hundred and five and twelve years, <clears throat> and he died. And Enos lived ninety years and begat Kynan. And Enos lived after he begat Kynan, um, eight hundred and fifteen years and begat sons and daughters and all the days of Enos were nine hundred and five years and he died and Canaan lived seventy years and begat Mahalalil, Mahalalil. and Canaan lived after he begat uh, Mahalalil eight hundred and forty years and begat sons and daughters and all the days of Kainan were nine hundred and ten years, and he died. And Mahalalil lived sixty and five years, and begat Jared. And Mahalalil lived after he begat Jared eight hundred and thirty years, and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Mahalalil were eight hundred and ninety-five years, and he died. And Jared lived a hundred and sixty-two and two years, and, be, and, he, and he begat Enoch. And Jared lived after he begat Enoch eight hundred years, and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Jared were nine hundred sixty and two years, and he died. <clears throat> Again, reading verse number one, and it says, This is the book of the generations of Adam. <clears throat> in the day that God created man, in the likeness of God made he him. It seems that the book of gener the generations of Adam lasted until the flood. For in this account, it only lasts until the time of Noah and his sons, which meant, <clears throat> or which means it came up to the flood. In other words, it was one of the worst, if not the worst, periods of time to live, or it could have been, you know, looked at in different ways, a great time to live or a, uh, the worst time to live. Uh, when the giants came along, yes, it was getting worse. And the reason is due to the giants that were born to the women. Uh, we don't know exactly what time period um, these giants came along whether or not they were born uh, right away, or if it took some time. Um, <clears throat> that is not given to us exactly the time frame of when they started to multiply. But obviously, when the book of en or Enoch comes along, he writes about these uh, things. So... We know for, for a fact that at least by the time of Enoch, they had been already widespread and multiplying. So you can take it before Enoch was even born. And uh, <clears throat> then, of course, um, so sometime in that area. The giants, no doubt, were those who probably got their way in were very violent and that's where the earth began to uh, have a lot of violence in it that were the the, the giants were <clears throat> extremely ruthless merciless in their time frame 
The women who allowed themselves to have the children were actually being corrupted by means of that seed. One wonders how their pregnancies turned out, if they had made it all the way to full term, how the giants came out, what size they came out, <coughs> and so on and so forth. They must have been attracted by, per se, by those fallen angels that had seized their opportunity to have children by those women. It was also a time in which man was formally uh, created perfect. Of course, Adam was created perfect. And then he and his wife, Adam and Eve, began to see the imperfection of sin entering into society. And it basically got to a fruition. Of course, um, Adam died uh, I believe during the time of Lamech. And so he wasn't able to get to all the way to the flood. Uh, but the flood brought in God's judgment on the society and that former, what we call the antediluvian age. It lasted over 1,600 years. 1,656 is about the number. There was one language, one continent, and uh, a so-called liberty due to the fact that there was no government. Well, that liberty must have been liberty to trample upon the, the rights of others, obviously. And, of course, the giants took their own liberty to do whatever they wanted. There was nothing stopping them from doing what they wanted to do. They were big enough. They were strong enough to do so. Yet this verse speaks of Adam first creating, uh, excuse me, this verse speaks of God creating Adam, and no doubt what God had created, mankind, of course he was perfect in the beginning. It specifies very specifically that God had created Adam in his image. Therefore, Adam and Eve essentially were without sin and had fellowship with God in the beginning, and only the beginning, but then later on. Of course, Adam and Eve did sin. Uh, they did not understand the totality, I believe, of all their benefits that they had and the totality of the sin that they committed, what would actually transpire. They were probably shocked afterwards. In verse number two, it says, Male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam in the day that they were, when they were created. <clears throat> God seemingly called the name of the first human being Adam. Yet here it is mentioned that God called their name Adam, so that's a question. Why would it say that? And it was the self-same day that they were created that he called their name Adam. God had created both male and female, thus this was the first marriage brought together in union by God himself. So that was kind of like God saying, this is what is called marriage. Between a man and a woman, that is how God instituted in marriage. God had also blessed them in that day that he created them. The blessing of the Lord was upon them at first, before their sin and before they caught the curse. He had blessed them with an abundance in the Garden of Eden, with all the animals that were perfect, too, just like they were. Without sin, everything was fine, everything was perfect, everything was, um, there was no violence in it, there was uh, a lot of love, you could say, love and humility and patience and, and all those things that were perfect. There was nothing on the earth that was not perfect, the only problem, what came along, was the serpent and the, um, somehow the uh, devil kind of spoke through the serpent and then deceived Eve that caused the generations of Adam to change from perfect to imperfect. So in other words, every human being that was born from Adam and Eve from that time on period, from that time on, they were imperfect. 
And of course, the fallen angels then had come in to the world and transformed themselves from what that was invisible to visible, and they couldn't change back to them, the former. And so they started what might be called the seat of the serpent, with violence, hatred, abundance of sin, corruption, and so on and so forth. In verse number three, it says, And Adam lived a hundred and thirty years, and begat a son in his own likeness after his image, and called his name Seth. Eve had mentioned that she had had a son whose name was Seth. So here it's talking about Adam begetting a son in his own likeness. Eve said the same thing, that she had had a son that was named Seth. And he had taken the place of Abel, who had murdered Cain. Um, excuse me. <laughs> whose name was Seth, and he had taken the place of Abel, who Cain had murdered. There you go. Uh, a Adam had lived a very long time before Seth was born. He had uh, lived 130 years. And uh, Seth was born, of course, from Adam and Eve. Thus, during, during those 130 years, there, there seems to be a question whether they had many daughters and sons besides the ones that are mentioned here. Yes, they did. Of course, they must have had daughters. And after... Mm, uh, it speaks about that they had son, that he had sons and daughters. Um, plus, but their but their names were not provided in the time period, the time frame. Was it the fact that Seth was the first after Cain, or were there daughters in mid in the middle? And is it that Seth was the third son? It's a possibility. That's what it sounds like. So one wonders, because it was such a long time, why could there not have been born more sons between? Why is it that 130 years have to pass before it's mentioned in the Bible as the person, uh, Seth, who took Abel's place? Did Adam and Eve live such a long time in the Garden of Eden? or outside of the Garden of Eden during those 130 years? How long did they live inside of the Garden of Eden? So this puts a question in our mind. Well, 130 years, maybe they had spent some time, uh, some years in the Garden of Eden. And there are questions that we have not the answer for. To have children so far as few between, you know, it seems like there would be some more, maybe daughters, between there. And so, maybe they did. It is that Adam, who was created in the image of God, of course, Eve was too. And he had a son, but Abel, well, actually, it says Seth. <coughs> Here, it says in verse 3, and Adam lived 130 years and begat a son in his own likeness, after his image. So in other words, not after the image of God per se, but after his own image, in his own likeness, in his own likeness, after his image. In other words, that means that <clears throat> because he had sinned, there was something that changed there. No longer was it completely perfect, but it was the sinful nature that had come in. And so then he uh, brought forth a son, and that sinful nature also attached itself to every son, that every daughter to, that was born afterwards. And so all of them had the sinful nature in them, but those who did not allow that sinful nature to rule in them were considered to be righteous. Amen. And so it says in verse number four, in the days of Adam, after he be, after he had begotten Seth, were 800 years, and he begat sons and daughters. So here is where it was, it has stated that Adam, of course, and of course Eve, had begotten sons and daughters together. 
He begat sons and daughters. The, the way the construction of the sentence is, it sounds like the sons and daughters came after he had begotten Seth. Um, if that were the case, that they had no other children before Seth or even daughters, it would follow that they must have spent many years in the Garden of Eden. I've already said that. Though in reading it, it sounds as though that it were not that long. It just kind of flows, and it seems like a very short time period, but it may have been many years. Nevertheless, uh, so, we are not told exactly the time frame, but since it was not until 130 years for Adam to have Seth, seems quite rational or logical that they might have been in the Garden of Eden much longer than we might have anticipated. Though I don't think I've ever heard anyone say specifically how long they think that Adam and Eve were in the Garden of Eden. And verse number 5, it says, And all the days that Adam lived were 930 years, and he died. This was the third recorded death. We have uh, Abel that had died. We also have a person that Lamech had killed. He had died. Now we have Adam who had died. But Adam died at a full age. He was not murdered. He lived all of uh, his quote-unquote years until he finally passed away. And it was the first one recorded in the Bible who lived out his entire days and was not murdered at the hands of another man. So, um, he lived a long life in so much that he had seen so many generations after him all the way until uh, Lamech. In view of how many years the antediluvian age was, it has been around 1,656 years, that being the case, then Adam living to 930 years of those years, there was only the 726 years left till the flood, which means that he lived longer, more, more than half the period of that time period. Adam lived <coughs> more than half of the period of the antediluvian age. Two of Adam's length and ages side by side would complete the entire antediluvian age. However, it could be stated with some certain certainty that there were many who had lived and also died during the antediluvian age due to the rise of the giants. It was probably due to the giants that they had killed many men, many women, and others could uh, others that others could not have done until uh, technological gains could have made it possible. In verse number six, it says, "And Seth lived a hundred and five years and begat Enos." Is it one wonders because Enos, or as his son, is mentioned first? that he was first born, and then sons and daughters were born thereafter? Or is it that it is just the name of the one son who became the more, most prominent or righteous person? Seems that he might have been the firstborn since the significance of the firstborn was nurtured. Regarding Seth, it is stated by Eve that Seth took the place of Abel. Therefore, it seems to be that he was the only one next born to Adam and Eve. In today's world, so many children, much earlier than may have been expected back then, for they have lived, they had lived so long before it is mentioned that they had a son. 130 years, and then they had a son. Verse number seven, and Seth lived after after he begat Enos. Yes, but I mean, verse 6, 805 years, and then begat Enos. Okay. And Seth lived after he begat Enos 807 years and begat sons and daughters. One notes that when mankind reduced the amount of years of his life, then mankind would have children sooner. At least that is what is mentioned here. Yet what is also not mentioned is how many children 
Sathor Adam had, as well as the others that are listed. They must have had a large number of children, though the fact is we who are readers are only knowledgeable of the ones that are named. The rest are not known at all. God knew all of them, but he was the one who chose not to name them, for Moses, who had written Genesis, could have received many more of their names. In fact, God could have given him the entire list. But God chose to keep the names of those who had lived during that age at a very minimum, one by one. One after another, one father, one son, one and then like that. So God chose to keep them at a minimum, as though there were so few that had actually lived a righteous life. If these listed did, in fact, live righteous lives, they as was and, and as is supposed. Yet that brings us back to the question of why Cain's descendants were listed quite similarly to Seth's, one right after the other. What was so special about naming them? For they had all died at the flood or died before the flood. We don't have much of that information of how long they live. That's not given to us how long these, this line of Seth, we have the number of years. But with Cain, we don't know. It would have been interesting to find out how long did Cain live and his son and so on and so forth compare it to the other side. But <clears throat> we don't have that information. And so, what was so special about naming them for they, yes, had died um, or, you know, died at the flood or right before the flood if they had lived to the flood. Verse number uh, 8 says, And all the days of Seth were 912 years. And he did. T together in life, Seth and Adam were together for a period of 800 years. A father and a son relationship. 800 years. What is also possible to see here is how many years each of these righteous people lived with the sons or the grandsons or further descendants mentioned. For example, Adam lived with Enos, his grandson, a period of 695 years together. Well, there's what was very possible, so very possible during that time is to keep the stories alive. Whatever stories they had, they could orally trans um, um, produce that for them again and again until they obviously understood it completely and very well. Where people lived together for such a long amount of time that they could uh, do that, tell the stories again and again until they finally remembered it. Since the book of Enoch was written, and it is, it is astu assumed that Enoch had written that book, it is intriguing as to know when writing was actually formed. Was it formed before Enoch? Was Adam the first one? Who actually started it? Well, Enoch, we have the account that he did write the book of Enoch. And so, who taught him? How did he find out? Did he learn it from God? That's a good question. We don't have that information, but we know that writing was at least present in the antediluvian age with Enoch. And he must have had passed it down to someone else. So it's intriguing to know when writing was actually formed. Was it during the time of Enoch that writing was indeed established? Adam lived with Cainan, his great-grandson, for a period of 600 years. And with Adam's great-great-grandson, Mahalalil, they lived together for a period of 535 years. Adam lived with his great, great, great grandson, Jared, a period of 470 years. Further, Adam lived with his great, great, 
great great grandson Enoch for a period of 308 years. But unfortunately, he was not able to see Enoch's translation up into heaven. Then Adam lived with his great 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 grandson Methuselah for a period of 243 years. I hope I'm getting all these numbers correct. And of course, Adam was one who had seen so many of his descendants, probably the most seen by anyone living. Probably the most seen by anyone living. That means of his descendants, full descendants, but not uh, all the, uh, as uh, not the most generations. For I believe that Noah and Shem saw more generations of descendants than Adam did. And then there was still enough time for Adam to be with Lamech, Lamech, his great, 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 great grandson, for a period of 56 years. What is not mentioned about Cain's line is how old each one when they had died. That is intriguing that it mentions not that as though it could have been much shorter in length. Was it that the righteous live much longer than those who were not righteous? It could have been compared right at the beginning, but it was not added. Yet, Seth and Enos, they lived 807 years together. So Seth and Enos lived longer together than Adam and Seth did. The intriguing part of the, this is the way it is worded. The son is named, then the rest of the years of the father is mentioned. So that means that the son and the father were together during those rest of the father's years. Hallelujah, until the father had died. In verse number nine, it says, And Enos lived 90 years and begat Cainan. Enos had Cainan at 90 years old. For that time period, it was not uncommon to have sons so much later than one's birth. But after the flood, of course, children were much born much sooner. The lives of those who had, be, who had lived began shortening so quickly. Yet if one looks how long Noah lived after the flood, it's like Noah lived so much longer than uh, some of the the son or the grandsons that had come after him. It's like they died. They were born and then died. They born and then died and born and then died. And Noah is still alive. In verse number 10, it says, Enos lived after he begat Cainan 815 years and begat sons and daughters. The time period that Enos and Cainan lived together were 815 years, the longest so far at that time that a father and son lived on earth together. Of course, there would be more that lived longer, but up to that point, it was the longest. Since they had lived so long together, one would think of what kind of opportunity this gave unto them to learn from their father. With the father and son, they could learn together course with so many other children born that we know not of and that we know not how many of course there might not have been so much time together but they did have the opportunity to be together at least it offered the father to be able to instruct his children in the ways of God if that is what they had done however during that age so many had turned away from the Lord God that it seems that they had gone away from their father's instruction in the ways of righteousness and had chosen a different route. In verse number 11, it says, And all the days of Enos were 905 years, and he died. Enos's life was shorter than that of Adam and his father Seth, but his benefit was he was able to live with a son longer than Adam and Seth. In verse number 12, it says, And Cainan lived 70 years and begat Mahalalel. And Cainan lived after he begat, begat 
Mahalalel 840 years and begat sons and daughters. Thus here, Kainan and Mahalalel had lived on earth as father and son the longest, a period of 840 years. There would be no other son and father living together on earth longer than these two. The other sons and daughters were probably so many, but they are unnamed. But here, biblically, we have the longest that a father and son have lived together on earth, 840 years. Verse number 14, And all the days of Cainan were 910 years, and he died. And Cainan Kain died earlier than Noah, Adam, Seth, Methuselah, and Jared. He lived longer than Enos, Lamech, Enoch, and Mahalalel. At the time, people lived so much longer, one wonders how they dealt with such people as the giants. But it can be stated that the giants may not have affected any of these who were in this line, that is, those who were named in the line. The unnamed person may have been affected, but we have no stats at all of who the giants had murdered or tortured or was violent against. Yet God's protection is seen then of the line of those who had called upon the name of the Lord, for they, they lived until the end of their days. In verse number 15 it says, And Mahalaleel lived sixty and five years and begat Jared. And it does seem that with all the, the violence mounting, one does, one might not want to have children anymore, for to keep them from the violence would be easier, per se, not seeing that violence. However, they, through the violent times that they probably had heard, still they were calling upon God. They still had a number of children, so their lives must have been very challenging. But God brought them through even the rough, roughest of times in the word of God. In verse number 16, it says, And Mahalaleel lived after he begat Jared 830 years and begat sons and daughters. 800 years together, 830 years together as father and son was the second longest time period. And all of those in this line, with the mention of their names in this list, died actually before the flood. Methuselah, of course, was the one who had died the year of the flood. Noah and his sons, of course, went through the flood in the ark, of course. But each of these in this list died before the flood took place. Which is kind of interesting how that could have taken place, how God really made it possible for none of these people to actually die in the flood, but they died before the flood took place. Verse number 17 says, And all the days of Mahalalel were 895 and five years, and he died. Enoch, of course, had the shortest lifespan of all of them, but he must have pleased God so much that, of course, God took him. Mahalalel had a shorter time than that of his predecessors, yet he still lived such a long life on earth during the antediluvian age that one day we may able, be able to talk with them about such a long lifespan on earth during such an age. We're going to be learn so much. Verse number 18 says, And Jared lived 160 and two years, and he begat Enoch. Even though Jared was not the one whom God took, he was the father of the one whom God took. Thus Jared was able to be a witness per se of the fact that if in fact he knew that God had taken him. What is not said was who had known on earth that Enoch was taken. It could have been that many thought that he had died suddenly somewhere, but maybe there were some witnesses and maybe someone had seen him go up into heaven. The idea is, though, that when Elijah was taken up into heaven, his mantle fell back to the earth. But nothing is mentioned about Elijah's clothes, with many ideas of the rapture being that people's clothes will be left behind, much like the mantle of Elijah. But then again, when Jesus went to heaven, his clothes didn't drop either. <laughs> of course, it was after his resurrection, so 
that was possibly different. However, it does not mention per se about Elijah's clothes, only his man mantle falling back down to the ground. And that was no doubt for a purpose, so that the next one, Elias, could use it for the purpose of ministry too. Amen. Pardon me, not Elias, Elisha. Elias is another name for Elijah in Greek, I believe. But so we have the Bible not mentioning that Elijah's clothes had fallen back down to the ground. Only his mantle did. So that Eli Elisha could then use it for the purpose of the ministry. In verse number 19, it says, And Jared lived after he begat Enoch 800 years and begat sons and daughters. Jared lived with Enoch only a period of 365 years because Enoch went with God. However, if he had not, it would have been 800 years. He would have been with his son. Nevertheless, to be with a son for 365 years is plenty much more than future generations that would be with their sons. Jared had the privilege, though, of being the one who fathered Enoch, the one who is the first preacher mentioned in the Bible, the one who first prophesied about the coming of Jesus Christ, though the name was not known at the time, and Enoch had even written the book of Enoch, which was quoted by Jude in the New Testament. That is the verse that speaks about the coming of Jesus Christ. In verse number 20 it says, And all the days of Jared were 960, 960 and two years, and he died. When Enoch had left and had gone to heaven, the book that he had written must have been with someone. It might have been with his wife then, but certainly it could have been distributed to his father or to even his son Methuselah, which sounds more logical, who must have provided that book directly to Noah because Lamech had died previously. So the only one that could have presented that to Noah was Methuselah. So Methuselah was the piece living long enough to die the year of the flood, but introducing that book to Noah for him to take it into the ark, because possibly, and no doubt, I would think, Methuselah must have heard what God had told Noah to do about building a flood, uh, uh, an ark, because God was going to destroy the earth with a flood. And so he must have said here, this was written by Enoch, this is the book of Enoch, please take it with you onto the ark, to preserve it. Because if it had not made it into the ark, it probably would have been lost. However, it must have been preserved by Noah in the ark. Enoch went to heaven before he was able to see Noah. And so he possibly gave it to his son Methuselah, who was the key person to deliver that to Noah. For Methuselah had even lived up until, until the year of the flood. Therefore, he would have been the proper person to deliver that book of Noah, uh, book of Enoch to Noah and have it kept safe during the flood for the righteous to read thereafter. May God bless you today in the name of Jesus. Amen.